Hello students, in this video we will look at how to find the correct T value or Z values for confidence intervals. So I have on this Word document a few examples of confidence intervals ranging from 90% to 99%, sample sizes ranging from 10 to 25, and the corresponding T value and Z value needed to develop our correct um, confidence interval. So let's go to a whiteboard. Help us understand how to find the correct T value or Z value. Now when we have, for example, uh, 90 90 percent confidence interval one of the first things to help us understand especially in using the charts that we have is that alpha which is our chance of being wrong is 100 percent minus our confidence interval so in this case alpha is 10 percent a confidence interval means that there's two two ends on both sides of the distribution so we divide alpha by two so we get half of that or 0 0.05. So for a 90% confidence interval, we're going to be looking at the 0 0.05 column in our uh, TV distribution chart. So there is our 5% value right there. Um, the correct Z value 1.64 right at the bottom. The last row in our normal in our T distribution value chart our corresponding Z values. You'll find that um, as our sample size increases in each in all of the columns, sample size increases based on the degrees of freedom increasing, the values are in the T values are decreasing. They decrease all the way down to that uh, Z value. So for a 90% confidence interval, our Z value is 1.64. 95% confidence interval, let's do that same process, 95% confidence interval, I think we're going to erase this big time, 95% confidence interval, same type of process in order to find the correct uh, normal distribution value. So 95% confidence interval, Alpha is 5%. We need to divide that by 2 for a confidence interval Z value. So we get uh, 0 0.025 or 2.5. So we find that in our um, chart. We're looking at this column for a 95% confidence interval. Our Z value is 1.96. Point nine six. Ninety-eight and ninety-nine percent confidence intervals. Ninety-eight percent confidence intervals. Alpha is two percent. Half of that will be one percent or point zero one. Point zero one using this column here, Z value is two point three three. Last confidence interval for the Z value is 99%. So 99%. Alpha is 1%. Half of that would be 0 0.005. Or 0.5%. Oops, 0.5% right there. Z value of 2.58. Z value is not based on sample size. At finding the correct T value is based on our sample size because T values have um, an extra element in order to find the correct um, T value. It's called degrees of freedom. Just going to erase this here quickly. In order to find the correct uh, T value, what we need is degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom equals n minus 1, and then we also need to find half of alpha. So we do this the same process. Let's look at 90% uh, confidence interval. 90% confidence interval, alpha is 
or 0.1. Half of alpha would be 0 0.05 or 5%. So that's the column we're going to be looking at for 90% confidence interval. But as you can see in our chart, 90% confidence interval right here is uh, for the T values is based on our degrees of freedom, which is N minus one. What I would put up here as well is now that we know that that column represents 90% confidence interval for Z or T, we can put that value right up there. Um, let's go. So we want a, a T value for sample size of 10. So degrees of freedom would be nine, 10 minus one. So our, the correct T value is 1.833. Doing the same thing for 95, 98 and 99% confidence interval. Let's just erase this again. and go through that process. Similar process. Very key to be able to find the correct Z and T, T values. So we know that the next one we want is a 95% confidence interval. Uh, sample size is 15. So degrees of freedom is going to be 15 minus 1. Alpha divided by 2 is going to be 0 0.025. So that's the column. And this is the row that we need to find our correct T value. So this is the column. So now we know for sure that this is the 95% confidence interval value. This column here represents 95% confidence intervals. So sample size is 15, 50 minus one is 14. So our correct T value is 2.145. A 98% confidence interval. Sample size equals 20. So degrees of freedom would be equal to 19. Um, half of alpha is going to be, alpha is going to be 2%. Half of alpha is going to be 1% or 0 0.01. So there's our column. There's our row that we need. There's our row. So now we know for sure that this is the 98% confidence interval. Uh, any value in this column would represent a 98% confidence interval. Sample size is 20. Degrees of freedom, 1 minus that would be, or n minus 1 would be 2.539. Next one we want is a 99% confidence interval. Sample size equals 25 because sample size equals 25. Degrees of freedom is 24. Alpha is 1% based on our level of confidence. So half of alpha will be 0 0.005. So when we're looking at that last column, there's our column oops, and there's our row. So this one here represents 99% confidence. So once again, any value in this column is going to represent the 99% confidence in interval. So sample size is 25, which gives us degrees of freedom of 24, gives us a T value, corresponding T value 2.797. There is the corresponding T values and Z values for our confidence intervals, keeping in mind that the T value is based on confidence intervals as well as sample size, whereas a Z value is not based on sample size. So there's one other, there's one column at the very beginning has half of alpha at 0.1. Let's try to find what that uh, corresponding confidence interval would be. So I'm going to erase it once again. So half of alpha is 10%. Um, so 
So half of alpha is 10%. Alpha, therefore, would be 20%. That's our chance of error. Therefore, our confidence interval would have to be 80%. So we can go to this chart oops, and put 80% on there. So for exam purposes, this row here is not given to you, but I would, uh, I would try to remember that those, the five columns represent those five confidence intervals as well. The uh, Z values found on the bottom of the T distribution chart. So that will be included on the, uh, in your final exam material. This T distribution chart with the Z values at the bottom. So that is how we find T values or Z values for confidence intervals.